Welcome back to ASEAN News, and this is the compilation for today. Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden honors veterans at Vietnam War. United States President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden visit the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington to mark National Vietnam War Veterans Day. North Vietnamese forces captured the South Vietnamese capital Saigon on April 30, 1975, marking the end of a long war, a date the Vietnamese referred to as a date of reunification. Meanwhile, the intended mission of the United States was to keep the South Vietnam from being controlled by communist North Vietnam, but the highly divisive war dragged on from 1957 to 1975 and polarized the United States and forced more than a million people to flee Vietnam. The United States war policy in Vietnam became a contentious issue that prompted large anti-war protests across the country that continued until the end of the war. In this war, some 58,000 Americans died in the Vietnam, with 2,646 listed as missing in action. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington is dedicated to their service and is one of the most widely visited memorials in Washington. Diplomatic relations between the United States and Vietnam were restored in 1995, 20 years after the end of the war. In addition, bitter enemies during the US-Vietnam War, Hanoi and Washington have enjoyed significantly warmer relations in recent years. According to the records released by AIDS to the Associated Press in 2008, Biden did not serve in Vietnam, receiving five student draft deferments and eventually being disqualified from military services because of asthma as a teenager. Joe Biden says the situation in Myanmar is absolutely outrageous after the military opened fire on the cemetery. He's not coming over, you're running too much. The United States President Joe Biden says the situation in Myanmar was absolutely outrageous after security forces opened fires at the funeral. It's terrible. It's absolutely outrageous. And based on the reporting I've gotten, an awful lot of people have been killed totally unnecessarily. The country had gathered to mourn 114 people killed the previous day in the worst crackdown on protests since the military coup on February 1st. Three people in the town tell Reuters that Mourners fled to shooting at the services for 20-year-old student Tai Maung Maung in Bago, near the commercial capital Yangon, and there are no immediate reports of casualties. President Joko Widodo strongly condemns attacks on the Church of Makassar as terrorism. Indonesian President Joko Widodo strongly condemns a suspect suicide bomb attacked outside the church that wounded 14 people in the city of Makassar on the island of Sulawesi. In a video broadcast, he described the attack in the country with the world's largest Muslim population as an act of terrorism and urges people to remain calm, saying the government will ensure that everybody can worship freely without fear. In January, a country terrorism unit raided a militant hideout in Makassar and killed two men suspected by police of involvement in twin bombings at the Philippine Church in 2019 that killed more than 20 people. Police blamed the Islamic State-inspired Jama'a Ansharut Daula group for suicide attacks in 2018 on churches and a police post in the city of Surabaya that killed over 30 people. At least five people injured and hundreds evacuated after a major fire at Indonesia's oil refinery. A massive fire has engulfed a refinery belonged to Indonesian state oil company Pertamina, injuring five people and evacuating 950 residents in the vicinity. The fire that began after midnight was accompanied by a large explosion and caused minor damage to house nearby. Pertamina in a statement says that the cause is unknown, but the incident broke out during heavy rain and lightning. 
Authorities still trying to control the fire at the refinery, which can process 125,000 barrels per day. Britain says Myanmar violence marks new low after more than 90 people have died in Myanmar. British Foreign Minister Dominic Raab says a violent crackdown on protests have killed more than 19 in Myanmar marks a new law and Britain will work to secure a path back to democracy in the country. Raab says in a tweet that today's killing of unarmed civilians including children marks a new law. We will work with our international partners to end this senseless violence, hold those responsible to account and secure a path back to democracy. Protesters against the February 1st military coup came out on the streets of Yangon, Kaltong and other towns defying a warning on state television that they could be shot in the head and back while the country's generals celebrate Myanmar Armed Forces Day. The killings, the deadliest days since the start of the protest, took the total death toll to more than 400. Thailand says Armed Forces Day is an Armed Forces Day, but the day they kill people. The leader of one of the main armed groups says Myanmar's ethnic armed factions will not stand by and do nothing if the military junta's forces continue to kill protesters. <laughs> According to local media and witnesses, at least 90 protesters were killed by security forces across Myanmar as the junta celebrated the annual Armed Forces Day. The Myanmar Armed Forces Day is not an Armed Forces Day. It's more likely the day they kill people. It isn't for the protection of democracy as well. It is how they harm democracy. In reverse now, it is the, the Restoration Council of Shan State, which operates near the Thailand border, is one of the several ethnic armed groups to have denounced the coup and vowed to stand with the protesters. Myanmar's two dozen or so ethnic armed factions control vast swaths of the country. Addressing a military parade earlier, junta leader Myung Ahun Leng says the army's job was to protect the people and promote democracy, reiterating his promise of a fresh election after the army took power on February 1st. Many protesters are calling for the formation of a federal army and Yao Tsark supports that. Karen villagers refuge the forest after Myanmar military airstrikes. Karen National Union says Karen villagers are taking refuge in a forest after heavy clashes erupted over the weekend between the Myanmar army and fighters from the country's oldest ethnic minority force. <laughs> Meanwhile, an activist group and media says about 3,000 villagers flee, many to Thailand, when military jets bombed at Karen National Union area near the Thailand border, killing three civilians after a Karen National Union force overrun an army outpost and killed 10 people. In this event, tens of thousands of Karen have lived in camps in Thailand for decades. Japan signed agreement with Indonesia on transfer of defense equipment and technology. In the transfer of defense equipment and technology, Shimizu on Japanese side and by Defense Minister. Japan and Indonesia signed an agreement on the transfer of defense equipment and technology during two plus two talks between their ministers of defense and foreign affairs held in Tokyo. We are able to sign the Defense Equipment and Technology Agreement today, which we have agreed to start negotiations at the first 2 plus 2 meeting in 2015. We will further promote our defense cooperation.
先ましてバインダーの交換をお願いいたします。Thank you. May I ask ministers who just signed the agreement? Japan, which ended a decades old b a n d and overseas arms sales in 2014 to help strengthen the nation's military and lower the cost of home built military equipment, has been in talks with Jakarta and other Southeast Asian nations on deals to allow such exports. So we、uh, support and we invite the Japanese、uh, side to take higher participation. In our defense industry, we also、uh, invite the Japanese side to participate in the modernization of the Indonesian defense capacity. capacity. Also, we encourage joint training between our services, air, and maritime, and also land forces. During the 2 plus 2 meeting, Japan and Indonesia's ministers of defense and foreign affairs pledged to tighten their military ties to face an assertive China. Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsuri also says she had been in close contact with Motegi to discuss the Myanmar situation and she appreciates Japan's support to towards the ASEAN effort to engage Myanmar. Catholic leader prays after church attack in Indonesia on the first day of Easter. Pope Francis prays for the victims of violence, in particular for people involved in a suspected suicide bombing at the Indonesian Church of Makassar. <laughs> Official says the two suspected suicide bombers attacked a Catholic church in Indonesia city of Makassar, wounding 14 people on the first day of the Easter Holy Week. Meanwhile, police say s the congregation was conducting their mass inside the church on the island of Sulawesi when the attackers detonated at least one device outside. The two suspects were the only fatalities. In addition, National Police spokesman Argo Yuyono says authorities were looking into which radical networks the bombers came from and whether the attack was linked to recent arrests of suspected militants. In January, a counter terrorism unit raided a militant hideout in Makassar and killed two men suspected by police of involvement in twin bombings at the Philippine Church in 2019 and killed more than 20 people. Philippine Catholics celebrate Palm Sunday amid coronavirus restrictions, hope that coronavirus will end. Dozens of Filipino Catholics braved the threat of coronavirus to attend a mass outside the Baclaran Church in the capital Manila to celebrate Palm Sunday, which marks the beginning of Holy Week. A Filipino Catholic chants and prays in this Easter and hopes that the pandemic will end. Therefore, people can find better conditions. At pumayag naman ang mga、uh, nasa. I hope and pray this pandemic will end. I hope our living conditions will get better, especially since there are a growing number of people going hungry. Wearing face masks and observing physical distancing to protect themselves from COVID 19, they waved their palm fronds as the priest sprinkled holy water on them. Churches will close during Easter to comply with the stricter quarantine restrictions the Philippines government imposed in the capital to slow the sharp rise in COVID 19 infections. About 80% of people in the Philippines are Catholic. At the St. Peter Parish in Quezon City, candles are attached to empty pews to represent parishioners taking part in Palm Sunday celebrations outside the church or online. The Philippines registers coronavirus cases and deaths total 721,892 and 13,170. The Philippines, the second highest in Southeast Asia, with infections reported in the past nine days, accounting for a tenth of total.
And that's for now. Please do not forget to continuously wash your hands, use your masks, and keep maintaining the social distancing rule. Happy Easter.